Hey everyone, today is Wednesday, April 1st, 2020, and it's the third day of online class. Um, so we're going to get started with our uh, agenda for today and talk about the directions for your activity. Here we go. Uh, so today's agenda starts out the same way as it has the past couple of days. Um, you're going to answer the attendance question if you haven't already. Um, then you're going to watch the video, which you're already doing. And then we have a couple of activities today. The activities are kind of broken into three steps. Um, we are going to be learning something new today. And then you're also going to do something old today. So it's kind of two parts. Um, mostly because we are not testing until Monday. And we don't really need three full days of review to get ready for the test. So we are going to be starting um, a little crossover between this unit on meteorology and our next unit on oceanography and that is um, a little sort of in between kind of topic called short-term climate change where we're going to be looking at El Nino and La Nina. So to introduce this topic you are going to watch a short ed puzzle which is posted in Google Classroom um, right under where this video is. Um, it's just about four and a half minutes and you guys have done ed puzzles before so you know how that works. Um, <clears throat> And when I see that you've completed the Ed Puzzle, that's how I'm going to know that you've done the assignment for the day. Um, then the next thing you're going to look at is the rest of this PowerPoint. I'm going to go through about two more slides, and then you guys are going to keep going in the PowerPoint. And that's where all the directions are to learn about El Nino and La Nina. You're going to be filling out two items today. There is a chart posted in Google Classroom that you're going to fill out with um, basically notes about El Nino and La Nina. Um, and then you're going to <clears throat> fill out a map using Cami a, to draw some pictures of what's going on with El Nino and La Nina. Um, and then once you've got an introduction to the short-term climate changes, then you're going to do a practice for the test. Um, and the practice is short. It's a 15-question practice test. Um, it's a Google form. It's been posted in Classroom. It does not count to your grade. It's just there um, as some practice to help you get ready. And then, of course, your test is Monday, so you just want to make sure you're continuing to get ready with for that. Okay, so let's start talking about the new stuff. Okay, this El Nino and La Nina. So let me bring up a few things. Okay, so first off, you hopefully have heard of El Nino and La Nina before. If not, that's fine. Um, we're going to learn all about it today, tomorrow, and Friday. Hey, um, what this is is what we call a short-term climate change, meaning that it only changes the climate in a specific location, in this case, the equatorial Pacific, for maybe a year, maybe a few months, and then it goes back to normal. Hey, so these are short-term climate changes. This is not the same as a long-term climate change like global warming. Hey, this is more short-term like, like the seasons. Seasons are a really good example of short-term climate change. Hey, um, let's get into a little bit more of the details here. Okay. So um, essentially what we're looking at is we're in the Pacific Ocean at the equator and during a time of either El Nino or La Nina, what is going on is essentially we're changing the, the I would say, average temperature of the ocean water in that location um, depending upon if it's El Nino or La Nina. Okay. Um, and the reason why the ocean water temperature changes there is because the trade winds, which we learned about in meteorology, they change strength. Sometimes they become stronger, sometimes they become weaker, and that causes a change in the water temperature. Okay. Um, this also can have effect on something called an upwelling, which is a type of ocean current, and the name kind of tells you what's going on, just like you see here. So it's water that wells up from the bottom of the ocean. So it's coming from the ocean floor to the surface and it's bringing with it cold water, lots of nutrients, and essentially what it does is it really helps to support the food chain and create a very plentiful fish population wherever an upwelling is occurring. 
So what you're going to be looking at today okay, is what we would call normal or neutral conditions. So you're going to be finding out what is it normally like in the equatorial Pacific. What's the normal temperature pattern? What's the normal trade winds? What are the normal upwellings? What is the, I would say, status quo? So you're just going to get a baseline today. Then Thursday, you'll learn about how, what changes happen to create El Nino. And then Friday, you'll learn about what changes are going to take place to create La Nina. So each day you're going to do a little piece of this new information on short-term climate change, and then you'll do a review, okay? So again, today you're going to watch the Ed Puzzle. You're going to finish this PowerPoint, which is going to prompt you to fill out a chart and a map, okay? And then finally, you're going to do the practice test for meteorology, okay? So three things um, are a part of your activities for today. Hey, just like always, if you have any questions about what to do, post them in Padlet or email. Or if you have just have questions about the information, like let's say you're reading the slides about neutral conditions and you don't understand something, post it in Padlet and I will offer you a more detailed explanation if you need it. Okay, I'm always here, even though we don't see each other every single day, I'm still here to help uh, whenever you guys need it. All right, so again, Ed Puzzle, finish this PowerPoint, and then work on the practice test. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day. I'll see everyone here in class tomorrow.